फिल स्टडी अबाउट शशंकासना शशंकासना इज रैबिट पोज हेयर पोज और यू कैन ऑल्सो कॉल इट एज बालासना बट फ्रॉम द एग्जाम पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू नो द सैंसक्रिट नेम यू गेट बालासना इन एग्जाम और इफ यू गेट शशंकासना इज एग्जाम द मैटर इज द सेम यू विल गेट स्लिप डिस्क सो यू हैव हर्ड अबाउट स्लिप डिस्क राइट द टेंशन गेट रिलीव व्हेन यू प्रैक्टिस शशंकासना पीपल हु हैव डायबिटीज रिलेटेड इश्यूज इन स्पैन ऑफ टाइम यू कुड कीप अ सर्टेन थिंग इन योर माइंड द पोस्चर इज इन फॉर्म ऑफ अ बोट यू कैन सी फ्रॉम द इमेज योर बैक मसल्स एंड योर अबडोमिनल मसल्स विल ऑटोमेटिकली स्ट्रेंथन Now don't get confused this categorization with that. Relaxative asanas are those asanas in which you sit and you feel relaxed. Yoga is the unity of body, mind and spirit. Hello all. My name is Rohit. I take physical education on behalf of Prep School by Vidyashram. In today's class, we will cover the fourth session of yoga. So if you haven't watched the first, second and third session, I recommend you go back and watch that session first and then come back and resume this video. Having said that, let's move on with our session overview and try to understand what all things we will be covering in this particular session. So first, we'll study about Shashankasana, then we'll move on to Nokasana, we'll look into Vrikshasana, and finally we'll conclude this session by understanding about Garudasana and how it is done and how it is performed. Okay? So let's start off with our first topic, that is Shashankasana. What do you mean by Shashankasana? Like I already explained, that is. hair pose okay so basically we are talking about rabbit pose basically we are talking about again child pose like i said in the earlier session also hair pose means what it is again the child pose the child crawling pose is called as hair pose or again here in sanskrit we call it as shashankasana you can see the subject performing shashankasana on this side okay so basically shashankasana is what shashankasana is rabbit pose hair pose or you can also call it as balasana or child pose okay but from the exam point of view it is important for you to know the sanskrit name so shashankasana the word shashankasana you have to keep in mind okay having said that let's move on with the benefits of shashankasana. shankasana what all benefits does shashankasana has okay it helps in relieving fatigue and promotes concentration of mind so it relieves any kind of fatigue that is there and it auto and it automatically provides concentration of your mind now it is important for you to go back and watch the other session because we are resuming this yogasanas from the previous topic that is again called as yoga for concentration now this is if you look into the timeline of this whole chapter this is the semi part of the last session okay so this is the second part of the last session like we studied okay so it is important for you to go back and watch the session in order to understand it much more better okay so it helps in relieving anxiety and depression and it also calms your mind okay so it gives you a calming effect it also relieves your mind okay and it improves any kind of depressive activity that is going on in your neural base and if also improves any kind of anxiety that you are facing so any problem related to anxiety depression will be resolved if you practice again shashankasana or in other words we also call it as again balasana if you get balasana in exam or if you get shashankasana in exam the matter is the same okay it's all about the child pose that we are talking about it helps in relieving your depression and it gives you calmness next it improves the blood supply to the head and therefore nourishes the eyes and the brain functions okay automatically it improves the blood supply in your body the blood supply that is going on in your body the heart to the blood pumping everything will be improved when you automatically practice padmasana and it nourishes your eye sight and the brain function so different kind of neural activity that goes in your mind related to neuromuscular coordination and many other processing activities and problem solving activities that goes in your mind will be fixed or will be again stimulated if you practice again shashanga now having said that let's move on to our next benefit that is again it releases the pressure of the discs so we are talking about what kind of disc we are talking about the lower disc of your vertebral column so when you talk about the vertebral column there is a disc that is present in the lower back people get slip disc so you have heard about slip disc right so slipping of that disc from the socket is called as basically slip disc so the pressure that is formed the tension that is formed after sitting for hours on a chair or after sitting idle for a at a particular place for a longer period of time you build up that tension that tension get relieved when you practice shashankasana so that's one another benefit of shashankasana next it regulates the functioning of adrenaline gland now adrenaline gland is responsible for secreting certain adrenaline compounds adrenaline elements in your body or adrenaline in your body when you get suddenly get a shock or when you suddenly get any kind of movement or sudden sudden kind of any kind of uh, your body you get surprised by something suddenly so adrenaline gets released in your body when your body gets hyper okay so the regulation of that the balance of that gets maintained or stimulated when you practice again shashankasana okay so 
that is one benefit of Shashankasana. Next, regular practices relieves the constipation. So, any kind of digestive related issue that you have, any kind of stool related issue or rectum related issue that you have, all those things will be solved if you practice Shashankasana. Next, the spine gets a forward stretch and becomes flexible and strong. Automatically, the spine becomes more flexible and automatically it fixes any kind of tension that's built up in your muscle. And also it solves many kind of postural deformities that is again in particular we talk about. It will also resolve a lot of kind of vertebral deformities. You have scoliosis, lot of these different kind of things are there. We'll study further later in the dedicated chapter of physiology and anatomy and sports, okay? So having said that, let's move on to our next benefit of Shashankasana. The next benefit is that it stimulates the functioning of pituitary, pineal, thyroid and parathyroid glands. So all round endocrine system, we are talking about the balancing of your endocrine system. The endocrine system will be balanced and it will be stimulated if you practice any kind of activity or if you practice again Shashangasana. Next, it reduces the excess fat in the abdominal region, okay? So automatically any kind of adipose tissue deposit or fat deposit in your abdomen will be resolved when you practice again Shashankasana, okay? It also is called as Chaldasana, it's also is called as Balasana. So keep in mind that if you get Balasana or if you get Shashankasana, the matter is the same. The benefits are the same because the asana is same, okay? What does it do? It reduces the excess fat in the abdominal region. So any fat or adipose tissue deposit is there in your abdominal region or in your lower belly region, that will be again cleared or burned out if you practice Shashankasana, okay? Next is, it also controls diabetes. So people who have diabetes related issues, if they practice Shashankasana, that also will be controlled. So that is one major benefit the Shashankasana has apart from controlling the neural activity and balancing the neural activity. Next, it increases the memory power. Automatically, the memory power, the concentration power, the span of time you could keep a certain thing in your mind that it improves when you practice Shashankasana. So you saw a lot of benefits are there if you practice Shashankasana. Shashankasana is one particular asana which is easily practicable which you can easily practice and also has a lot of benefits for that okay having said that let's move on to our next topic that is the contradiction of Shashankasana what all are the contradictions of Shashankasana those individuals who are suffering from high blood pressure or slip disc should avoid this asana two people are involved in this category who should avoid this asana that is again people who are suffering from high blood pressure or people who are suffering from slip disc okay anybody is suffering from slip disc or anybody who is suffering from high blood pressure is totally restricted or should avoid practicing this asana because that will obviously make it worse that's why it is put under contradictions now one thing you have to keep in mind is that when you discuss about all the benefits of yogasana don't take yogasana just as a fitness activity because it's a medicine also every medicine will have a side effect if it is not taken in the right time the right dosage or by the right professional suggestion right so automatically since it's a treatment if you don't take it in the right condition automatically it will create a worsen or adverse effect right it will have an adverse effect exactly like that Shashankasana also has contradictions so what are the contradictions you have high blood pressure then you have slip disc so these two category people who have this kind of issue should avoid that so don't take it lightly it is very important to be serious about or take contradictions of each asanas very seriously Having said that, let's move on to our next asana for yoga for concentration that is Nokasana. Okay, what is it? It's Nokasana. Like I said, it's called as Nokasana. Why it is called as Nokasana? Because the posture is in form of a boat. You can see from the image, the subject is performing Nokasana where the subject is posing as a boat where again the body is taking the form of a boat in a curvature shape, right? That is why it is called as Nokasana. So what all benefits does Nokasana have? Let's take a look at it. Okay, so first, Nokasana, it turns the muscles of the legs. So automatically the muscle that is present in your leg, the muscles of your legs will become more stronger, flexible, and also it will tone the muscles. That means the shape of the muscle, the proper density of the muscles will be balanced if you practice Nokasana. Second benefit is that it is useful for persons with hernia. People who have hernia, if they practice this asana, it will be beneficial for them or it will cure this problem, okay? Next, it strengthens the back and abdominal muscles. So automatically, your back muscles and your abdominal muscles will automatically strengthen. So when you talk about abdominal muscle and when you talk about the back muscle, those are the key elements or the, those are the main components of your upper torso strength, upper core strength. So in simpler terms, if I tell, or if in modern language, if I tell, it will again improve the strength of your 
upper torso it will improve the strength of your upper core strength okay so upper core strength will be improved if you practice nakasana next it helps in digestive process automatically any kind of digestive disbalance is there if you are facing any kind of digestive issues related to constipation or anything that will be getting resolved when you practice nakasana next is it helps in reducing belly fat so any kind of belly fat that is present will be reduced if you practice nakasana Now, having said that, hoping you understood the meaning and again the benefits of nakasana, let's move on to our next topic, that is the contradictions of nakasana. Who all should not do this, and who all should be restricted from doing this? Okay. So, in case of low blood pressure, that's the one category we have. If people have low blood pressure, if anybody who has low blood pressure, if you have migraine issue, if you have spinal disorder and severe headache, you are not supposed to practice this asana or don't perform this asana. So, who all are the categorized people? Who all are not supposed to practice this asana? People who have low blood pressure people who have migraine issues people who have spinal disorders or people who have severe headache should not practice this asana okay next uh, you should avoid practicing this asana if you have asthma or heart diseases so people who have asthma or heart related diseases should avoid practicing this asana okay now having said that let's move on to our next benefit the next benefit is that women should avoid this asana during pregnancy okay so that's one another contradiction that you have so women who are pregnant should avoid practicing this asana so that's one another contradictions you have so basically there are a lot of contradictions when you talk about nakasana so what all things are there first first people who have low blood pressure people who have migraine people who have spinal disorder people who have severe headache are not supposed to practice this asana okay and people who have heart related diseases they should also avoid it and finally women who are pregnant are also restricted from practicing this asana now having said that hoping you understood the different contradictions of nakasana now one thing that you have to keep in mind is that yoga is basically divided into different asanas and different other elements you studied about eight elements of yoga then you studied about an element called as asana we are focusing more on the asanas because in practical life in the regular life that we are living now implementation of that is much more practical given all the circumstances and everything every life that we are having when we focusing of yoga asanas it is divided into three different categories you know we have meditative asana we have relaxative asana then we have corrective or cultural asana more on that we already studied in the earlier session so you have to watch that session first to understand it better now here is yoga for concentration now don't get confused this categorization with that okay so there it is given as three different types so there it is given that yoga asanas are classified into three different categories you have Uh, meditative asana you have relaxative asana then you have culture and corrective asana but suddenly here they are telling about yoga for concentration so suddenly here they have given so suddenly here it is given that yoga for concentration now don't get confused that's a different categorization that's like like i again said in that category again said meditative asanas are those asanas which in which you sit and you do meditation then after meditation so meditative asanas are those asanas in which you sit and do meditation relaxative asanas are those asanas in which you sit and you feel relaxed then you have corrective asana so yoga for concentration is basically giving you both a blend of different different components different different categories so certain asanas that you saw in the yoga for concentration throughout the session keeping in mind the last session also so yoga so for session that you saw in this session also continuing from the last session that you saw also they have given certain asanas will be there which belongs to the meditative categories also certain asanas will be there which will be belonging to the relaxative as well as corrective asana so because it will show the properties of all these three categories so what property should an asana have if that asana has to be in part of if that asana has to be in the category of meditative asana you should be able to sit in that asana and perform meditation simple as that same for the relaxative you should be meeting the needs of relaxation and for the corrective you should be able to fix any kind of problem so lot of asanas that we saw today in today's session lot of them gives you relaxation also lot of them you can sit in uh, sit for meditation also in that and lot of them will fix a lot of problems also in that so it will belong to all the three categories okay so certain asanas will you will encounter certain asanas further in the chapter also or later in your life also when you study or practice yoga which will fall into all the three different categories but the basic idea is that it will fulfill the whole aim of the word yoga itself basically it will making it is making you mentally physically and spiritually fit so what is yoga yoga is what yoga is the unity of body mind and spirit so your so basically your physical fitness your mental fitness and your psychological your physical fitness your mental fitness and your spiritual fitness if all are into the place if all are being done properly if all are balanced properly automatically what happens the whole concept of yoga and the whole practice of yoga is solved okay the whole concept of yoga or whole practice of yoga is made worth or it is fulfilled okay so that's how the whole concept of categorization and every element that you see works so you might have noticed one more thing in the whole session throughout the last session or this session also that 
every concept that we studied had to do something with the physiology and anatomy spiritual part of the body spiritual part of your life or the regular practical part of your life also so that's the whole concept overall fitness is the main aim of yoga yoga is what yoga is to it helps you to live a healthy lifestyle okay it guides you to live a healthy lifestyle so i hope you understood the different yoga asanas that we studied under yoga for concentration and you know, i hope you understood the different contradictions the benefits of that the meaning of that in what all cases you are supposed to practice that in what all cases you are not supposed to practice that i hope you understood the different categories that we studied and different things and different concepts that we covered in session having said that i'll take an off from here for this session i'll see you in the next session until then this is me rohit signing out until next time goodbye